going on to five years now. And uh, the big thing that, you know, is just great to me is I'm seeing, you know, Democrat uh, people coming out. We're seeing new faces. Uh, we did have, you know, the heads of the Republican Party and the Tea Party in here. So obviously there's big things that are happening. And uh, this is a big time in history. You know. uh, this is definitely exciting. Um, well, first off, I just kind of wanted to uh, give a layout of uh, my uh, local opinion. Uh, Valos has been an awesome town. I, I haven't really even thought about leaving. Uh, I've given thought. I'm like, man, I should go off, start somewhere fresh. It's nice. It's nice in here. So, but uh, with that saying, you know, I'm retired military, and uh, I used to think that war was awesome. It wasn't until I actually went to war that I realized really what was happening. Uh, when I was deployed in uh, 2009, that's when I kind of started realizing a lot of things. You know, uh, a lot of guys would listen to a lot of crazy music. They're big into the, you know, set, you know, like CCR and everything. And you start seeing different things, you know, in perspectives. And uh, my big question was, if we were fighting a ragtag group, as far as we call these, you know, terrorists. Why did my unit, within a six-month span, uh, set the world record for most munition drops? Uh, and I can kind of give you a little reference. Uh, we deployed over 375,000 rounds worth of 30-millimeter uh, rounds. We dropped over 85,000 uh, two-pound or 2,000-pound bombs. Uh, so my my big thing is, who are these people that we're fighting? It can't be just you know these. Uh, guys in the cave that are running around in sandals. That's a lot of people. <laughs> well, come to find out, uh, if you're deemed a terrorist, it doesn't matter what you do. If you're deemed a terrorist, if I were to go out and uh, say I was a government informant, I was getting paid the big buku dollars that some of these uh, corporations are handing out, such as Blackwater. Um, you know, now formally, I think there's around like X3 or something they're called. If I go out and I have an informant, I pay him, and I said, this guy might have guns in his house. Now the time frame where we used to go kick in doors is no longer, now it's, we're dropping bombs. So my big thing is, uh, we definitely, my, I, I feel like the wars need to end, uh, all the wars. Uh, when we think about defense of a nation, we should be building bases here. It employs a lot of jobs around uh, those neighboring towns, just as you see uh, as Moody is. But at the same token, when we look at that, we have to be really worried as far as uh, the federal outreach into the communities. Um, I spent a lot of time trying to think about how to word things so I wouldn't scare people off and you know, start hearing the door slap in the back. Um, my big thing is federal outreach into the communities to uh, further you know, expand uh, the global governance, as we would call it, uh, or you know, just federal government in general. It's no longer our federal government. But I had brought up uh, to attention to Alan uh, about the new uh, Sheriff's Department uh, program that they're calling SPEED. Now, I don't know if you guys have been wandering around town and noticed a couple of the uh, checkpoints that have been popping up. These are going to be mandatory. You're not going to get out of this. Actually, this will probably be within 2013. Uh, you'll be seeing a lot of this. It doesn't matter if you're considered, you know, a legal immigrant or you're a citizen or you're a valid also citizen. It doesn't matter. Your thing is now, you will have to provide papers. This has all been set up and it's all been designed strictly off the Afghan war and the Iraq war. It's all blueprints. If you look at them strategically, it's all blueprints. And uh, that's why I totally agree uh, with Diane when she said that this is a socialistic takeover. Uh, I'm a little bit more, uh, I guess, hardcore into believing that it's full on communism, but it's like anything. If I were to rob your house and you caught me trying to come through your front window, I would change it up. I wouldn't come through the front window no more. <laughs> Maybe next time I won't be able to, you know, to have that opportunity. So uh, communism has definitely learned. Uh, they've adjusted their tactics. And uh, just like the video said, we're going to let the people think they're going to be free. And this is how they moved in. And, uh, you know, especially when we look at uh, either Republican or Democrat parties, 
we've seen that they've gone away from the American voice, and we're looking at now it's whoever can shell out the biggest, the biggest dollars. And you look at George Bush, you look at Clinton, or you look at Obama, or you know even if uh, Romney comes in, the big thing now is talking about who are we going to bomb next. Well, it shouldn't be talking about who we're going to bomb next. It should be how are we going to save our country. <laughs> we're, we're about to rot. It's rotting inside out. We have no jobs. I don't know if you guys saw the headlines. Jeep is now going to be built in China. Uh, that's what the thing is. But perpetual war is definitely a booming business. And a lot of veterans, uh, a lot of my buddies, they don't have job options when they get out. Uh, actually, what they've gone and done is signed up with government contracts to go back straight into fighting again. So you're just getting paid as a civilian, but you do the same thing. Uh, I just had uh, five of my guys that I used to work with. One of them, he was a supervisor of mine. He is now in Saudi Arabia teaching uh, Saudi Arabians how to load and uh, disperse weapons uh, with our old our, uh, F-16. So, like I said, the thing is, the war is continuing. It needs to stop. And I think, especially uh, when we look at the war in general, it's, it's going to eventually spill home. We're going to piss off the wrong people. Iran is definitely not somebody to be playing with. Our, our forces are spread too thin. We just can't, we can't do it. And if we get into this uh, defense posture with Iran, you're going to see the war spill home. And that's my big thing. I definitely don't want that. And uh, But moving on to the local movement, uh, this is great. You know, a lot of big things have been happening, you know, especially with uh, the total global enslavement, I guess you would call it, is they're meeting resistance everywhere. Uh, whether it be, you know, in Tampa, that banned fluoride. Uh, they had over a million si uh, signatures to ban fluoride. They got it out of their water, they're clean. Uh, into the state of Georgia where you have, you know, uh, Nolan Cox, he stomped out tea squaws, you know, <laughs> stopped the tax, that's good stuff. And, you know, just here tonight, just seeing new faces. And, I mean, this is a big thing for us. So we're definitely glad for everyone to come out. And uh, if you hear anything, especially that, uh, sparks your interest, you know, get active, definitely, and my big thing is, uh, when we look at the military, I'm going to leave you with a couple of uh, quotes, uh, their slogans, I should say now, uh, the Air Force's slogan is, global air power, the Navy's slogan is, global sea power, all right, and the Army and the Marines, they're still, with the, they're still trying to figure that one out, but you can kind of guess, and uh, like I said, I just want to thank everyone. And uh, if you'd like to lo uh, learn more, anything about uh, the military industrial complex, um, which is ever growing, and uh, we want to learn more about what's going on as far as uh, that and to our city, definitely come ask me. And uh, just look up uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower, like he said about the military industrial complex mm -hmm. right before he uh, made his exit speech. Thank you.